Hi everyone, it's Sherry from Our Life Homeschooling where I share homeschooling encouragement for everyday moms. Today I want to talk about homeschooling boys. I'm going to be sharing what I've learned from raising and homeschooling our five boys. If you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Sherry. I'm a homeschooling mom to 10 kids five of whom are boys. Maybe another week I'll do a video on girls. I'm a former public school teacher turned homeschool mom. We've been homeschooling for 14 years now. Our oldest son is a graduate, so we have an adult son. We have a 16-year-old boy, 9-year-old boy, 5-year-old, and then our youngest is going to be turning one in a week. So we have a pretty wide age range of boys. I have a lot that I feel like I've learned and a lot that I'm still learning. So I want to just tell you about some of the things I've learned about boys up to this point. I also want to refer you to two people that I think are an excellent reference on boys. I've listened to a lot of their podcasts, uh, read their blogs, and those are, first of all, Dorinda Wilson. She does a, the Dorinda Wilson podcast. She's done a, several podcasts on boys. She's a mom to eight kids, and I think at least five of them are boys, if I'm guessing right. And she just talks about this a lot. I've learned so much from her. So I'll put that link to her blog down below. The second one is Kelly Crawford from Generation Cedar. She is a longtime blogger that I've followed. I love what she writes. She writes all about parenting. And she just recently started a podcast. Everything she has to say about parenting is excellent. She's a mom to 11 kids and I think about half of those are boys as well. So she just has a lot of wisdom and experience. You can find her on the blog generationcedar.com. I'll link her blog and podcast as well below. Although there's something unique about raising boys, all kids are different. They're each individuals. And once you become a parent, this is one of the first things you learn. You think um, there can be your, your first child, you can't imagine anything else, and then your second one comes along and they're so different. And then the next one, and you think there can be no other mixtures in our family. And then you, I, we had our fourth, and I just, she was completely different. All kids are different. So if something that I say doesn't resonate with you and your situation with your boys, um, I'm just sharing what I've learned from my experiences and hoping that that can help someone. I'm going to start uh, moving back to my earlier days in homeschooling when my kids were pretty young and our oldest was probably around 9 or 10. I was really in the thick of homeschooling, probably had like a 5th grader, 3rd, 1st, kindergarten, um, and then just some, some babies and toddlers. We were in the thick of it. Back in those beginning days, after we got through our morning work, I always liked to go for a walk in the neighborhood. We did this every day. We lived in a suburban neighborhood and um, just getting out and getting some fresh air really always helped us. And I remember walking one day and looking at my oldest son thinking, how is this going to look when he gets older? I love homeschooling. It's offered so many options um, for our kids. It's been a great environment. I was so passionate about homeschooling. I have been from the start, but how does it look with boys when they're older? When my oldest son turns 14, is he still gonna be walking in the neighborhood with us like this? How does that work? Homeschooling boys, especially as they get older. So I'm gonna get into homeschooling older boys further on in this video. The first lesson that I've learned about boys is your boys are not like you. This seems really obvious, and we all know this at some level when we first have our boys. We know that they're different. Um, boys are more active and strong and um, always moving, always busy. But I didn't realize the extent to which my boys are not like me. I just kind of thought when I would teach them something, I would break it down in the best way that I knew how to do it for them. But really, a lot of times I was teaching them the way that I would learn or what was familiar to me or what seemed most logical to me. And boys are inherently different. Um, I learned this specifically. We had two boys first um, and then we had a girl. 
So we were exhausted. Two boys, they're young, they're into everything, you know, rowdy, typical boys. And then we had our daughter, our oldest daughter. And I realized how different boys are when we had her because when she was around a year, a year and a half, and she started talking, she would come and just sit on my lap and talk to me. And it seemed so different because it was the opposite experience of what we had experienced with our boys. Boys are very active. Uh, our boys had no interest in coloring when our daughters came along. Next, we had three daughters. They loved to sit and coloring. We didn't have crayons and coloring books in our house until our daughters came along because they just weren't, our boys weren't interested in it. They didn't want to sit and do it. If I gave them crayons, it was just like scribble all over, walk away, it didn't interest them. Whereas our girls would sit there for a long time and just enjoy coloring this paper and being quiet and looking around. And um, so the experience was completely different and I was beginning to see some of these changes with our daughter. It's important to fully understand how different your boys are from you and you'll learn more as they get older and older. I've learned from my husband a lot of things just watching him. He understands how boys think and um, I'm just thinking to a couple times when I'd be trying to teach them a lesson and I'm just breaking it down and doing it the simplest way that I know and my husband will come along and read the same passage in like a silly voice and you know act kind of like crazy and they are glued in and totally get it. They remember nothing that I've taught them and everything that dad said. My husband understands how boys think, and so I really think it's great to ask your husband. So I really think it's important to realize and remember that our husbands are going to have some insight and understanding into how boys think more than we are. The second thing I've learned is that boys are physical. They throw balls, they break things, they jump around, they have a ton of energy that they need to get out. Boys can't sit still. They need frequent breaks. The best thing to do for homeschooling boys is to keep your lessons short. They have short attention spans. Some boys can be really easily distracted. And um, I think for this reason, sometimes kids get labeled. Boys have, are, because they're very physical, they sometimes have a hard time just focusing on something that is not requiring physical activity. And um, it's easy to think that maybe they just cannot focus or that they're not motivated to do whatever's in front of them. I found with my boys, I just have to find the right motivation. Given the right motivation, um, my kids that have been distracted are super focused. If they have the right reason to do something or they're intimidated by something or they want to prove something, they can be so zeroed in and really surprise me with how intentional and how they can focus until the end, until they get that done. So find out what motivates your son and use that to your advantage in your homeschool. Boys are physical. They need uh, trampolines. We have trampolines. We have volleyball nets, all kinds of balls. We have basketball hoop. We have, you can have a pogo stick, a bike. I like to find as many ways as we can to keep our boys active so they can get that energy out. Sports is a great thing. Our oldest son played soccer. Our second is into basketball. Um, our nine-year-old is also, he just loves basketball. And when they can get out and just do something that um, motivates them and they have to focus and it just gets a lot of that physical energy out, it really helps them. The third thing is that boys thrive on competition. Um, when our one son was, oh, he must have been five or six, and we were having one of those days, it was probably a winter day like today, where we were all inside and everybody was just kind of going crazy. It was getting chaotic in the house and we just could not bring it down. So 
I told the boys, I, I said, just go outside. Go outside and run around the house five times. And in my head, this was like a punishment. This is a consequence because nobody was listening to me. And so he went out and ran around the house and came back in. And I thought, okay, he's going to be, you know, calm down and everything now. He went and ran around the house. He came in so excited. This was so fun. And he asked me if I would get my phone out and time him so he could try to beat his time. So the rest of our day was then him running around the house again, trying to beat his time. Boys love competition. And um, I've found that if I can make a game out of it or make it something where they're competing against themselves, they are just super motivated to work harder. As our kids got older, uh, we have our older kids go to a drop-off co-op for high school where they get their classes from other teachers. And for this, my, um, my boys have really been motivated by getting grades. I don't give grades in our homeschool for the most part, um, just because to me, it's not about the grade. I just want them to be making progress every day. But your son might be really motivated to see a grade and to try to compete to get better at that. Thinking back to some of the earlier years when I was homeschooling, I started with a math curriculum that was really teacher intensive and it, I had to sit down and do the lesson individually with each child. And so I did this, I loved this program. I did it for our first three kids, but when I was teaching three individual math lessons, I realized it was not sustainable and I had to move into something where they could work more independently. I thought this was a disadvantage that they were gonna have to be doing more on their own, but because my sons love competition and love to know what's next, what to expect, and how long they have to work until they're done, it has worked really well for him. It had the opposite effect. My son didn't like me sitting down and giving him a lesson, not knowing when it was gonna be done and how many more things we had to do until it was over. He loved looking at his math for the day, seeing what he had to do and figuring it out and knowing when he was gonna be done. The last thing I wanna talk about is homeschooling boys through high school. Homeschool is a great option for high school because you, you're not in a classroom all day. You can ease them into the adult world and you can give them a lot of opportunities for apprenticeships. They can take more control and more ownership of their plans and their decisions, what they wanna learn, um, how they wanna learn it. Uh, I think homeschooling gives you a lot of freedom in high school but it's really, really important how you do it. As boys get older, they should be less and less in a domestic environment. I'm sure you notice as your boys get older, they're getting bigger, they're stronger, they're bigger than you. Um, with both of our older boys, I remember being in the house one time and hearing a man's voice and just thinking there was a man in the house and having this kind of frightful feeling like what's going on and then I realized it was our sons. They are older, they are becoming men and they need to learn how to be a man and you can't learn that by being home with mom all day. So when our boys get into high school, what I have learned and what we are aiming to do with our future sons is to hand over all of their high school work, their, their school work, their credits, everything over to my husband. He oversees as much of it as possible. In addition to that, we try to give them male role models and influences as much as possible. And we've done this through coaches at their co-op. They have some male teachers, which has been wonderful. We have a drum teacher. Um, my husband goes and plays basketball two days a week, really early in the morning, and he takes our sons with him. We've looked for as many opportunities to do this as possible because boys need to be with men. And they, they thrive on the challenge of getting the approval from older men. Mom is no longer intimidating to them. She's not anything that is, is kind of a match for them. They want the approval of men and they, they thrive on that. It's also been really helpful for us, for our boys to have jobs. Our sons have both had jobs at 14 
and it wasn't because we um, we pushed them into it or anything. They really wanted it and they, they loved it. They loved working. It, they loved being busy and um, it kind of got them into that working world. And I felt like it was needed. They just, they kind of were home and sometimes just didn't know what to do with themselves and didn't know how to keep themselves busy. They needed to be out. So um, getting a job, it doesn't need, they don't need to work long hours. In fact, I don't really like them to work a lot of hours when they're young like that. But for them to just uh, be responsible to an employer and have, boys thrive on a challenge. So giving them a job where they have to meet certain expectations um, puts that on them and they want to rise to it. One thing that some of my friends have done that have graduates is they found another man for their son to work with one or two days a week when they're in high school. So an electrician or a carpenter, someone that has some kind of trade where their son can just observe and follow along with them a couple days a week. Um, this is just really, it's great for them as far as learning a trade and keeping them busy learning a skill, but also just being with a man, again, is just, has such a great influence on boys. Now, if there's something that I haven't mentioned, maybe some of you have some experience homeschooling and raising boys, and you've thought of things that I don't have or haven't mentioned in this video, I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below and let us know what has helped you or what tricks you've learned from homeschooling your boys. Let this be a discussion that we can have and we can help each other in this job that we're doing of homeschooling boys. Boys are an incredible blessing. I'm so thankful for both the boys and the girls that God's given to our family. And let's just ask the Lord to help us, to give us the wisdom in raising them. If you like this video and you'd like to see what homeschooling looks like on a daily basis in our home, you can take a look at this video I did last week on homeschooling in winter, how we get through some of those dark, cold months. Thanks for watching today. I'll see you next week.